Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz and GA Power Supplies. This presentation explains how to configure and use the different features of the NGA series power supplies, including both basic and advanced functions. The NGA is a series of compact linear power supplies, available in either one or two channel models. The maximum values of voltage, current, and power depend on the particular model. Some of the more important features include ramp or arbitrary output, integrated statistics and logging, digital input and output triggers, and remote sensing. We'll cover all of these in this presentation. The NGA also has advanced protection functions for avoiding dangerous output conditions. And remote control via USB, Ethernet, or Wi-Fi is also supported. On the front of the NGA, connections can be made using either screw-down type insulated terminals or pluggable banana-style connectors. Connections can also be made on the rear of the instrument at the provided terminal block, with the F terminals being for output connections and the S terminals for so-called sense connections, something we'll cover later in this presentation. Once connections are made, we enter values for voltage and or current and then enable output. For two channel models, you'll need to select channel 1 or channel 2 using the hard keys and then choose either voltage or current. Values are set using the rotary knob and cursor keys. Use the left and right arrows to select a digit and either the knob or the up and down cursor keys to change the values. Confirm values by pressing the knob or the enter key. To activate the output, simply press the output key and the desired channel or vice versa. Values can also be changed during operation using the illuminated knob and cursors in so-called live mode, which is entered by holding down the knob. The NGA displays the output voltage, output current, and output power updated in real time. For each channel, history information in the form of maximum and minimum values of power, voltage, and current are also shown. The color of the displayed values indicates the operating mode for each channel. White is used in editing mode, that is, when the output is disabled. Values in green indicate the channel is operating in constant voltage mode, and values in red indicate constant current mode. Let's stop for a minute to explain what we mean by constant voltage and constant current. Normally, the user of a power supply configures a fixed output voltage. In this case, the output current depends on the load resistance, as per Ohm's law. This is called constant voltage mode, because the supply will hold the voltage constant even if the load resistance, and therefore current, change. Note that if the load resistance decreases, the amount of current supplied will increase. A large drop in load resistance, therefore, could lead to a current that's high enough to cause damage. One solution to this problem is an electronic fuse that turns power off when maximum current is reached. Instead of disabling the output entirely, another solution is to limit the current to a maximum value by decreasing the output voltage. In this case, the supply is said to be operating in constant current mode. Whether a power supply operates in constant voltage or constant current mode is determined by the user-specified output current limit. There's no button or menu item to toggle between these two modes. Let's look at an example of this on the NGA. We configure the output voltage to be 6 volts and enter a current value of 400 milliamps. After enabling the output, the NGA will hold the output voltage steady, or constant, at 6 volts, even if the current changes, as long as the current remains below the configured threshold of 400 milliamps. Since we're in constant voltage mode, the values of voltage, current, and power are all displayed in green. Now let's decrease the current value from 400 milliamps to 300 milliamps. The output voltage still starts out at 6 volts and remains constant when output current changes, but only as long as the limit of 300 milliamps is not exceeded. If, however, more than 300 milliamps would be drawn, the NGA automatically switches to constant current mode, lowering the output voltage until the output current does not exceed the configured current limit. When operating in constant current mode, values of power, voltage, and current are displayed in red. Although power supplies are usually operated in constant voltage mode, so as to provide a fixed voltage, there are cases where we may want to have an output voltage that dynamically changes, 
based on a user-configured pattern or sequence. The NGA supports two different functions for dynamically changing the output voltage, namely Easy Ramp and Easy ARB. Let's take a closer look at these. As the name implies, Easy Ramp is used to create a continuous rise or ramp in the output voltage. The output voltage starts at zero and then rises to a defined voltage over a ramping time from 10 milliseconds to 10 seconds, after which it remains constant. To configure Easy Ramp on the NGA, first configure the final or target output voltage as usual. Then press the menu hard key and select Output Easy Ramp. Easy Ramp is enabled on a per channel basis, the only parameters being the ramping time needed to change from 0 volts to the final output voltage. Once Easy Ramp has been configured, Ramped Output is enabled using the Output Hard Key. Note that during operation, Easy Ramp is displayed in the status bar. Unlike EasyRamp, which linearly increases voltage from zero to a defined value, EasyArm switches the NGA output between different discrete voltage levels or current thresholds. Each one of these levels has a user-defined value and duration, and the sequence can be repeated multiple times. Note that EasyArm is only available on channel one. To configure EasyArm, press the menu hard key and then select Output EasyArm. Note that this function must be explicitly enabled. The Easy Arb sequence consists of a series of points, each defined as a voltage, current, and duration. This sequence of values can also be repeated multiple times. Once you finish configuring these parameters, use Apply to set the table. On the NGA front panel, press the Output Hard key to enable output, and then Enter to start the sequence. Next, let's talk a little bit more about the NGA outputs. The NGA outputs are both floating and galvanically isolated. This means that the two outputs of a dual-channel NGA can be viewed as separate and independent power supplies. This in turn makes it possible to connect the channel outputs in series or in parallel. By connecting the outputs in series, the NGA can provide higher voltages than would be possible with a single channel. And by connecting them in parallel, higher currents are supported. For example, we can combine two 100-volt channels in series in order to get an output voltage of 200 volts. Or, we can combine two 6 amp channels in parallel for a combined output current of up to 12 amps. On the NGA, combining outputs is called Channel Fusion. Channel Fusion is enabled by pressing the menu hard key, then selecting Output Channel Fusion. The two modes of Channel Fusion are Series and Parallel. In Series mode, which is used to produce higher voltages, the two middle terminals are used for the combined voltage output. The link between these channels is made internally, so no jumper between the channels is necessary. When using parallel mode to produce higher current, the leads must be manually connected to the terminals in parallel. Once channel fusion is enabled, the combined voltage and current is displayed and configured as single values on the NGA. In this example, two channels have been combined in series to increase the maximum output voltage to 200 volts. We can also see that series is now displayed to show that channel fusion is active. One thing to note is that some NGA functions, such as Easy Ramp and Easy Arb, are disabled when operating in channel fusion mode. When operating either as individual channels or as combined channels, the NGA provides four different types of protection functions. The first three of these, over voltage protection, over power protection, and over current protection, are user configurable and will be described on the next slides. There's also an over temperature protection function that protects the supply from excessive heat. If any of these protection limits is reached, a red indicator flashes on the NGA display and a beep is sounded. Let's look at each of these user configurable protection types. To configure over voltage and over power protection, press the menu hard key and then choose output protection. Note that these values are configured on a per channel basis. For both over voltage and over power protection, disabled means that the limits are determined by the hardware itself. In the case of over voltage protection, setting the type to measured disables the output if the measured output voltage exceeds the user defined limit. Protected prevents the user from configuring a value that exceeds the limit. For over power protection, setting the type to enabled simply turns off the channel if the user defined power limit is exceeded. 
Overcurrent protection is provided in the form of an electronic fuse that protects against high currents. On the NGA, these fuses are configured per channel with a user-defined current and delay. If the fuse is activated, output is disabled, and a red fuse indicator is shown in the display. After a fuse has been activated, the output must be manually restarted. In a dual-channel NGA, it's also possible to link fuses together. That is, if the fuse is tripped on one channel, both channels are disabled. Fuses are enabled using the Fuse Hard key on the front of the NGA. Simply press Fuse and then select the channel. To configure fuse delay and linking between channels, press the Menu Hard key and then select Option Fuse. Note that the fuse delay can be set from 0 to 10 seconds in 10 millisecond increments. This menu also is where fuse linking can be enabled or disabled. Now that we've covered the basic functions of the NGA, let's look at some of the additional or advanced functions. These include tracking, remote sense, data logging, digital input and output triggers, and remote interfacing or control. Let's start with tracking. On two-channel NGA models, the channels can be linked or tracked. Tracking means that changes made to voltage and current on one channel are applied to the other channel. To configure tracking, press the Track Hard key, select the Hard key for the track channel, and then select Voltage or Current. The blue highlighting in both channels shows the values that are being tracked, and changing the value in one channel automatically changes the other channel by the same amount. Note that although voltage and current will change by the same amount, the absolute values may be different in each channel. The next topic is Remote Sense. The cables connected to a power supply's outputs have resistance, and this will cause a voltage drop between the power supply and the load. In many cases, this very small drop can be ignored, but it can become significant with high currents or small load resistances. Remote Sense is a method used to monitor and compensate for the voltage drop in the supply leads. In Remote Sense, two leads carry the current as normal, but two additional leads, called sense leads, are used to measure the voltage at the load. Because these sense leads are connected to a very high impedance in the supply, there's almost no current flow on these leads, and therefore almost no voltage drop. Based on the readings made using these sense leads, the supply can adjust the output to obtain the desired voltage at the load. To configure Remote Sense, press the Menu Hard key and then select Output Remote Sense. If Remote Sense is enabled for a channel, this is indicated by SNS in the display. The sense wire connectors, S plus and S minus, are located on the rear of the NGA. It's important to be sure that the sense lines are connected when Remote Sense is enabled. Otherwise, erroneous voltage and current levels may result. Another helpful function on the NGA is its ability to log data to an external device. Specifically, voltage, current, and power can be logged to a file every 100 milliseconds. To start and stop logging, use the Log Hard key. Log files are in the standard CSV or comma-separated values format and are automatically named using the current time and date. Another useful feature is digital input and output triggers. The NGA has four independent trigger lines located on the rear panel. Each of these lines can be used as an input or output trigger, and this makes it easy to integrate the NGA with other devices. For example, an external event could be used to turn the NGA output on or off, or the NGA could inform another device when a protection threshold is crossed. There are a wide variety of trigger conditions or actions, including turning the output on or off, having the voltage or current exceed a user-defined threshold, crossing a protection threshold, or running an easy ARB sequence. To configure the digital I.O. triggers, press the menu hard key and then interface digital I.O. Note that each of the four lines has its own configuration for specifying things like direction in or out, the channel, the stimulus or response, and any values associated with the trigger, as well as the logic state. There's a master enable for all triggers, but each trigger can also be enabled individually. Digital triggers can be used to remotely control or monitor basic NGA functionality, 
but more sophisticated remote control is also possible over the NGA's remote USB, LAN, and Wi-Fi interfaces. These remote interfaces enable programmatic control. That is, they allow you to both configure and read values from the NGA using standardized commands. Remote interfaces are configured via menu interface. Note that two methods of USB connection are supported. The first is the virtual COM port, which enables control over a simple terminal interface. The second is the test and measurement class, which provides functionality similar to the older GPIB methods of remote control. Please see the NGA documentation for more information and a complete set of supported commands. Let's end with a brief summary. The Roding Schwartz NGA is a family of compact linear power supplies that are available with either one or two independent outputs. The NGA is easily configured using the front panel, but also supports multiple digital input output triggers and more advanced remote control. Other important features we've covered include Easy Ramp and Easy ARB for varying the output, channel fusion and tracking for two channel models, a variety of protection functions such as electronic fuses and over voltage protection, remote sense for overcoming the effects of lead resistance, and data logging. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz NGA Power Supplies. Thanks for watching.